Morning everybody, welcome back to the shop. This morning is going to be the first of three videos I'm doing on the phase converter build. There are a lot of videos on YouTube right now about building phase converters or, you know, reviews of phase converters that someone has built. Um, they were all to me lacking one thing and that was what was the process that was gone through to really determine what were the right capacitors and that's the mystery. What are the right capacitors, where in the circuit, and getting those correct so that you get the most efficient ghost leg or, or generated leg you possibly can with the least amount of power coming into the system. In the video descriptions, I put a link to a document, and that is what I'm following. I would highly encourage you guys to get that document and either download it, have it open on another screen, or print it out. If you follow along in the wiring diagram, this will probably make more sense. In addition, what I will be doing will be following the steps that are outlined in the, in the document itself as far as how to go through the tuning process. This is going to be kind of like a cooking show where everything's a little pre-measured, but I will take you through the steps of how I laid it out on this board as I went through the initial wiring steps, and then um, I'll go through setting up the capacitors in the different areas and testing them till we reach the optimal readings and we'll zip through that and in the end what we'll have is a working prototype of a phase converter that we will then build upon in the next two videos. My pony motor is a seven and a half horse totally enclosed fan cooled motor. Seven and a half horse is going to be plenty to run the equipment I've got. I can even convert my mill if I want. The largest motor that I'll be driving will be the five horse motor on the lathe. Enough talking, let's get started building this thing. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is lay out my comings and goings. This is going to be where my power comes in. Over here is where I'm going to hook up the pony motor or the idler. And over here is going to be my three phase out. For that, for, for these, I got these snazzy little connectors. Almost exclusively, the connectors that I'm using came from the surplus electronics store. I frequent in Fairborn called Midwest Electronics. Midwest Electronics. They have a website, but a lot of what they have isn't on the site, so if you're looking for something from there, feel free to call them. The two guys that own the place are real nice guys. Okay. In, idle, out. From here, I'm going to lay in these connectors. Now these I expect to be just temporary. These are just for laying things out. That's the running. And in the end this is going to help me optimize how things lay out. We're going to call this down here ground. I think I can even draw the symbol. <laughs> Ground. I've got little spade connectors already on the ends of some of these. Again, I don't know how many of these are going to get reused when we actually put it in the final enclosure, but for now, I can see very clearly what's hooked up and what's not. The way I'm laying this out is this is single phase so I have two legs. I'm going to connect one leg here via a switch and I'm going to connect another leg, the, the other leg, down here which will make this middle one the ghost. 
Right here in the middle, I'm going to put a switch. So let's move to the switch. So this is the switch I've decided to use. It's just a great big, it's actually a three phase capable switch. Um, three on each side. And it mounts on DIN rail. So this is a DIN rail mount type of deal that goes into here. Very handy stuff. I use this a lot in my CNC build. So we're just going to screw this here to hold the switch. And then I'm going to connect from my connector block to the switch. I got my through line 120, 120, making my 240 circuit. My ground line is here. And then my third leg is here. So you can see how that kind of lays out the same way. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is connect the pony motor block down to here. Okay. Power coming in, switched, goes out to two legs. The pony motor is hooked to the two outside and then the middle one here to the ghost leg. Next thing we're going to do is, if these are our three phases, we're going to hook them to our output. And this is just a convenience thing. We can do whatever we need here, we can take measurements here. I'm using this because I want to be able to hook a motor up and try it based on this big layout board. For the next step, I've made a little pigtail here that we're going to use my welder outlet for the time being to test this out. So this will be plugged, this is actually a 50 amp plug, um, but this will be hardwired in the end. This is the lead to the pony motor sitting over here. So here we got our ground and our three phases. Now at this stage of the game, if we turned the power on and spun the motor or we used a secondary motor, it would work and we would generate some power at the phantom leg. However, this is going to be an auto starting converter. In this drawing it shows two start capacitors. We're not going to do that. We're going to use just one. Either way you slice it, the start capacitor goes between this leg and this leg. Here's our start capacitor. And here's a push button switch that we're going to use to activate it. So what this is doing for us is throwing the electrical fields out of balance so the motor starts to turn. And this is a momentary switch. We hold it, the motor starts spinning, we let go. Now at this point, we can start this whole deal. They will run with no capacitors in here. So let's give it a try. Let's just see what it does and do some testing. Switch is off. Double check in the wiring. I think we're good. So we'll plug her in. Now I want you to listen because this is important. If when I when I do it this way, the motor will have a hard time starting. And you'll think, oh, I need more start capacitor. But as the other legs come into more balance, when we add other capacitors, that all goes away. So when I turn this, you're going to hear the motor hum, and then I'll hit the starter. Ready? There we go. Up and running. Now let's measure these three legs. Thank you. 
So you can see the ghost leg was generating some power, but not a lot. And the voltages were way out of whack. So now that we're at this section for tuning the converter. And this is where you get into what capacitors to add where. We're going to start by adding capacitors here. Now I know from my reading that it's going to be at least 100 microfarads. So this is 113. We're going to start with it. And we're going to learn why there's four why there's four plugs on these. Before you get all over me, I already verified that the capacitors were discharged. Okay? With one capacitor in, listen how fast the motor starts now. Just with one. Just like that. Now this is where we notice there's a big jump here and not much of a jump here. And that's to be expected. And that actually tells us which one of these letters is which. So we're going to add some more. This time we're going to add a 50. And this is where these multiple plugs take into account. I could wire these to here, but instead I'm going to wire these to here. When wired in parallel like that, the microfarads increases additively. So this is 50, so we're now at 163. There won't be much change in how the motor starts. Not quite enough. We're close. We're at 238 and we need to get to 242. This is a 20 microfarad. We're going to add it and start it again. Okay, we reached our goal. 242, we're at 243. Perfect. Or... Perfect. <laughs> so this one's good. Double check the voltage, make sure the caps have drained one more time. We're good. So that does the one leg. That's done. Now we have to do the same thing from here to here. So let's start again. This is our goal now. BC should be less than 258 volts. AC should be greater than 253. We just added 113, and you can see we're coming up. Let's add some more. We're going to add a 50. Again, we're going to add them in parallel. One more. There's our capacitors here, our second set of capacitors here, and our voltages there. Now something that needs to be said here, these currently are equal. 
but that's not always the case. Depending on the motor you've got, the age of the motor, and age sometimes has to do with wear as well as efficiency in the way it was made, but these are not always the same. Read the, if you read through the example document that I'm following, you'll see that in his case, these were different by about, mm, these were different, enough said. So with this, it should run right now. We've got good balanced voltages, so let's put it under a load. Last thing we're going to do is this capacitor across here. So that's from here to here. Now I could do that from here to here, but again, for this open view, this capacitor is from here to here, and this reduces amperage. So we're no longer checking volts, we're checking amps. The first thing we're going to do is get a baseline. So with it running, This is a 20 microfarad capacitor. So at this point, this is our rough layout. We have a simple switch for cutting in and out the start capacitor, simple on-off barrel switch here, and this is a fully functioning rotary three-phase converter, admittedly missing some safety options. In our next video, we're going to add a breaker out here. We're going to add a panel indicator light so we know when it's on. We're going to add a contactor switch in place of this switch. All those things together along with another push button switch and we'll have a really nice setup. That's for part two. Okay everybody, I hope you got something out of this video. It's kind of an ugly layout but it's really just for my own education. Now that I know I've got a fully functioning well-balanced rotary phase converter from here, I can start to add some of the safety features, which I'm sure some of you are out there cringing about, like, well, you know, where's your breaker, and where's this, and where's that. Those items are for the next video. As for now, I'm going to uh, run the shear a little bit, well, just because I can. See you next time, guys. Thanks for stopping by the shop.